What is up, YouTubes? I have not done a video like this in a while. I literally have not <laughs> created any of the content that I've wanted to because I've been so damn busy. But before we jump into this tier list, obviously you can see by the title what it's going to be. I wanted to talk to everyone on YouTube about something. Amazon owns Twitch, if you did not know that. So Amazon bought Twitch like a year ago or something. And just the other day, they announced that now if you have an Amazon Prime... um subscription which is where if you own amazon there's, there's prime it's something you pay for every year it's a yearly thing you have that you get twitch prime automatically meaning every month you can go in and get one free subscription to somebody so each month that would add up to like what is it like 60 bucks or something um worth of subscriptions where you don't pay for it so you can come into my channel you can go into your favorite other youtuber who streams channel and you can subscribe for free if you have amazon prime uh you just have to connect you log in um, I can drop a link below in the video. You you log in to your Amazon Prime, and then you have to connect your Twitch, and then you just go to the channel and hit subscribe. It's that simple. But it's a big deal because that if you think about it, all the people that have Amazon Prime who might not even watch Twitch, that's a lot of money that's just kind of floating around. So it doesn't cost you anything. It really supports the person that you subscribe to, whether that's me or someone else. So I'd really appreciate it. I'm sure whoever it is that you choose to subscribe to would appreciate it if you would sub to them so just wanted to let you know if you hadn't heard about that it's kind of a big deal uh just to put it into perspective i streamed for three hours the other night and had 140 people that had amazon prime and they use that the twitch prime to sub to me so yeah it's just it's almost it's like right around like life changing <laughs> it's that's a lot of money coming in each month the one catch is that you subscribe for a month and then at the end of the month the subscription is canceled it doesn't automatically renew so you have to go back in and either sub to that person or change your sub to another person so it's a really good thing you just have to kind of keep track of it um and like i said it's really if you've been have you've had amazon prime you've been paying for this for a while it's free so i just wanted to let you guys know about that if you hadn't heard about it um i'm gonna drop my links below obviously we sell out so sub to me with it i'd really appreciate it if you don't choose to sub to me at least go sub to somebody else if you have amazon prime because it's a big fucking deal and yeah, now we're going to go ahead and jump right into the tier list. And we're just going to go down the list. Uh, I'm on Smite Guru for this one. Just went to a random tier list. And this is going to be based around my scrims. A little bit on ranked because ranked isn't really something that you pay attention to. Casual just stuff I see. It's going to be more, it's very opinion based, very biased. Because there isn't a lot of competitive that's been played since the last patch. So if you don't agree with it, that's fucking great. You don't need to agree with it. But I am basing this off of the top level players playing with and against them. I'm not just basing it off of my team. I'm basing it off of what I see other players do with it rather than just myself. So take it how you will. If you don't agree with it, fuck off. Um, if there's a couple things you don't agree with, you can drop it in the comments below why you don't. Just don't be an asshole because I'm doing this to try to give you guys my point of view. Um, not to sit here and argue with you guys. If you don't agree with it, don't watch. It's that simple. Um, that's really how all my videos are. So anyway, we're going to go jump into it. We got Agni first. Agni's just not safe at clearing. You can get away with Agni. Agni's not the worst. It's not poop. Uh, it's just really hard in the early stages, which can cause you to lose a lot of farm, and then which can kind of snowball into like losing your speed and more invades after that. So I'm not a fan of Agni for that reason. Next is AMC. AMC is just not good right now, guys. No mobility. Doesn't really bring much to the table. Easy to gank. Uh, la the lane clear is there but that's about it it's like and then there's still people that can clear the same so it's really nothing special upwash kind of similar no mobility really sketchy not really gonna work in the mid lane gonna get ganked a lot gonna be really susceptible to dying to just about every assassin that's played in the meta next we got amaterasu amaterasu is gonna be a plus for me so let me like jump back a second SS is going to be fucking broken, needs to be nerfed for me. It, I'm, I'm going on my own list here. I don't care what other fucking people say each letter is. I'm going on my own list here. SS would be, needs to be nerfed right now, completely broken, if I put someone in there. S plus is going to be your gods that are first pick, first ban, every game. S are going to be your gods that potentially make it through picks and bans and are going to be first pick because the other gods are banned. Uh, S minus are going to be your really, really good gods, your top three pick gods that don't necessarily have to go first you might hold off and wait a little bit a plus are going to be your gods that can be played all the time no matter what a are going to be good but kind of situational and not always the best pick a minus is when you start to fall into maybe a niche pick that most people won't play but it works for you even though it's not that great and then b is going to be shit c is going to be shittier and d is going to be the worst shit ever uh with that being said i need to jump amatrasu up to s minus 
Ama is great. You don't have to pick Ama in the top three, but she does go in the top three a lot. Her lane clear is weak early, but her team fight is amazing. Her actual level one clear with the right junglers is really good because it allows the junglers to hit harder and do more damage to the minions or the uh, camps, and you just clear faster. So Ama actually has decent clear early with the right junglers, just bad lane clear. Get through the lane clear and get into team fights, and you'll do work. On her gonna be an a plus for me i like on her i think on her is really good i think the pillar can kind of change fights i think the god might have trouble with most most lanes but if you can get through that kind of similar to ama and you get into your team fights and you're actually using your abilities properly and landing your fucking impales uh holding your alts for the right time positioning well on her is a very good adc pick not necessarily the top pick but pretty good anubis gonna be a b tier <clears throat> kind of like Alpwash. no mobility you have to stand still to do your damage that's gonna be an issue Alquang. Alquang does not get played all that much right now. I think once land comes around, we're going to see Alquang come out again. That's what happens at lands. I don't know why. That's just how it fucking works. But Alquang can pretty much be played in any situation unless you have too much magic damage. Then you're going to look towards your normal junglers that are physical damage. Um, if you want to run a hunter middle, Alquang is a good jungle pick. So it, I mean, there's really nothing bad about Alquang other than the early pressure isn't there. You get the late game, you carry. That's your goal. Aphrodite. Going to B tier. I don't like Aphrodite. Um, alt is okay. Healing is not that good because everyone builds brawlers. It's built in every build in the jungle pretty much. And a lot of warriors builds and shit like that too. Uh, if they're building damage. The anti-heal coming out of weakening curse. Most people have weakenings in a game because of all the meditates and all the other healing abilities that have been put into the game. Um, pestilence is really easy to get in a really good item. There's just so many good anti-heal items that fuck over Afro. And while Afro doesn't have early clear and doesn't have a lot of damage early until you... And then the sustain isn't even there until everyone can get their anti-heal. Afro's not a good pick. I don't recommend it. Apollo. You can get away with Apollo. Similar to Agni. He's not great. He doesn't really just tear up this meta in any way. He just kind of does his thing. He global ults into fights when he wants to. But then when you have Jing Wei sitting in the background, is an Apollo ult really worth it? Not really. There's just better. So Apollo's going to be A tier. You can play him. It's not going to be the end of the world. But there's better. Arachne. While I wish Arachne was good... I'm going to throw Arachne in the A-. minus. I think that's going to get played or might get played by one or two people. There's going to be those people that for some reason love Arachne. They figure out a way to make Arachne work. And they're going to play her. But she's not a good jungler at a competitive level. You can pub stomp ranked in casuals with Arachne easily. It'll be a joke. I promise you, like, if you play Arachne correctly, you can just farm bad people. Because when you're in a pub game and a casual and a ranked, there's a lot of... 1v1s, 2v2s, 3v3s. Once you get past those fights, once you get really into 3s, 4s, and 5s, like 3v3s, 4v4s, 5v5s of the Arachne, that's when Arachne starts to fall off. The engagement really isn't there. It's hard to get into fights. You have to hold your ult really to escape unless you just demolish them right away and can just go chase, 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 chase. Um, and that makes her weak. Ares. Another kind of one of those picks that's just going to get played by some people because they can make it him work. I don't think he's bad. I think his laning phase usually doesn't go the best against a decent team. I think he can be initiated on and just killed over. And if I'm a jungler and I see an Ares, I'm just going to go kill him over and over and over and over again. So he never gets ahead and then he becomes irrelevant. That's pretty much the common strategy. Artemis. I think Artemis is not good at all. But because some people manage to make her work sometimes, I'm going to throw an A- minus and say, she's not the worst. She doesn't have mobility, but because her alt and her two, between the two, she gets the movement speed and then her alt makes her immune. She kind of does have that safety factor, but she's just she's not that good in lane. Um, making it out of laning phase is super important right now. And it's really, if you're not picking the right picks, it's going to fuck you over. You're going to get invaded. You're going to lose your red. You're going to lose your boars. Uh, you're going to get invaded on the other side of the map. It'll lead to gold furies. It just has, there's a huge snowball effect right now when you get demolished in laning phase. Athena. Athena is going into the A plus for me. She doesn't have to get picked. She's not going to get picked every game, but there's, she can be running solo with a good solo laner who wants to play that style. Uh, you saw me run in the jungle and I fucking demolished. And that's just because Athena works against the, like it just works against everything pretty much because it forces people into beads. And if they choose other actives over beads, you focus them, they get fucked. Uh, Athena also still works in the support very well. Aggressive supports just do great. Uh, the global alt is still key to the whole Athena kit. A Wheelix. I like A Wheelix right now. With Nem being nerfed, uh, not played as much, with other gods not being the best, I like A Wheelix right now. I mentioned early clear being important. A Wheelix has decent clear at level 1, level 2. Uh, ability to fight early game. 
you don't have to build a team around the knockups because there's so many I, or there's so, right now there's so many uh, abilities that knock up it's actually kind of ridiculous plus Oelix can kind of do her own thing with knockups and between other people having leaps and shit that are in meta you don't need to like build a comp around Oelix you just need to play Oelix properly um, the problem with Oelix has always been the team fight but with Void Shield being nerfed a little bit and people not building it as much and there being more squishy targets and just more the jungle is all about damage kind of again and not about being a full tank build or a lot of tank build. Um, Oelix works again in my opinion. I really like Oelix. Bacchus can be A+. Plus. Can lose lane easily but once you transition into team fighting, even early team fighting, you get a flop up. You can kill people very quickly. Plus the ult is ridiculous and Bacchus does a lot of damage. Baka. Not good. I'm not going to put... I'm going to put Baka in B and it's going to <laughs> piss you guys off. I already know it's going to piss so many people off because people love Baka. He doesn't have a place in the meta. Um, he doesn't clear waves to run in solo lane. He doesn't have the lockdown, the gank potential, and he needs a lot of farm. So coming out of the jungle is not a good option. And then he just doesn't, where else is he going to go? I mean, there's nowhere else for him to go. Not only is his laning phase really weak, his team fight is kind of garbage because you can just focus him and kill him. Or he'll, you can just kite around his ult. You can, you can bait out abilities. Uh, you got one leap. You got true damage out of the three. The creepy, like his kit isn't the worst. It just doesn't work in competitive. It just doesn't. There's no success for the god. It just doesn't happen. Bastet. I don't like Bastet, but people make Bastet work. Um, we saw over the SPL, I think Shattered on enemy played Bastet a lot and would split push. Uh, I'm sure other people played it. That's just the one instance I can remember. So I don't recommend playing her. I don't think she's a top pick at all. But I do think there are top players that can make her work at a competitive level. And it's just kind of their thing. You know, I'm not going to play Bastet. It's not going to happen. But this other person could play it and do just fine with it. And it doesn't mean the god's great or bad. It just means she's that person's pick and they can make them work. And you might be able to too. Bologna. I think Bologna's bad. Bologna does not get played very often at all. And that's like every god in the solo lane is banned out. They nerfed her ult a long, long time ago, and ever since then, she just got played less and less and less and less. With Ama, Robin, freaking, I'm trying to think of all the, there's so many solo laners that are just really, Wukong, there's just Erlong, Ur, Erlong, Erlong, Shlong, <laughs> Erlong Shen, there's just so many good solo laners right now that Bologna doesn't have a place. She can't run in the jungle because you can't really get the kit off the same way you used to be able to when she was running the jungle. Um, it's just not just doesn't do well and i put her in a minus because i wouldn't be surprised if there's someone that only plays Bologna. um there's been people that even though she's not the best they'll play her over and over again and they'll win games just because they know exactly what they're doing it's just not the top pick for you as a solo laner i promise you it's not Garakin, another kind of situational thing i don't know where anyone would play it right now he's not bad he's not the worst with tank boots getting nerfed again, it kind of made Kabrakin a little, little bad again. Uh, I, once again, I'm not going to play this god, but I'm sure someone like, I don't know, DJ Pernicus or somebody could whip out a Kabrakin. He used to play Kabrakin way back, like months and months ago, and they would be really aggressive early and it would work. So you can try him. You can run him in the jungle. Uh, he could potentially be running the support. He could be running the solo. He's just not going to be the best pick in any of those roles. It's, there's no chance. We've got Chalk next. Chalk is weird. I don't mind Chalk, and people aren't going to like this, but I think Chalk is one of those A-tier gods where we've always said the team fight is bad, but a lot of the solo laners that are being played right now really do the same thing as Chalk. They just get in the way. Well, early game, they want to clear. They want to be able to rotate. They want to get fire creeps, all that stuff. Chalk does, has like the best lane clear ever. Not really, but he has really good lane clear, and he has really good ability to kind of poke at people. It's just his team fight isn't great. His ult is really hard to be used amazingly. But when compared to, say, a Wukong or something, Chalk can really get in, a, in an ADC's face and fuck him up the same way a Robin does or a Chalk or a Wukong does or an Ama does. Ama's team fight's obviously a lot better. The ult's a little bit different. The other ability is the fucking movement speed, the extra damage. But in Chalk's case, just being able to be in the way in a team fight, it actually works. And I really wouldn't be surprised if we saw more Chalk coming out in the lands it just wouldn't shock me chunga i don't like chunga people play chunga though in the mid lane in the solo lane it, gets, it happens sometimes i've seen people try to play it in the jungle not that good once again healing not a top priority thing because it's so easy to counter it uh, early clear isn't the best 
but she is kind of able to be safe with the immunity and the fact that she does have a little bit of sustain and she has the cool the really good ult that's kind of hard to miss so we might see somebody pull out chunga like kiki or somebody like that because he, he did play her in the spl i think someone else did too you just never know chiron i don't like chiron but people make chiron work they play chiron in the middle all the time over in europe and it works i feel like chiron slows fuck i don't like playing the god i don't know how they make it work but they do very there's a lot of people that make chiron work uh, i guess it's almost automatic poke with the auto attack into a two i think you also have the alt, which is super long range and hits really fucking hard, assuming you can hit them all. And then you can follow that up with the that poke damage or that finisher or whatever out of the two. I believe that's the, the ability that's used. People just make Chiron work. It's not played as much in the ADC. It's played more in the mid, but a lot of people do it. I can't explain it because I don't like the god, but it, it is a thing and you could easily play it. Just put some time into it. Uh, learn how to clear. The early clear is where it kind of weirds me out how people make it work, but they do. Kronos. I don't like Kronos. I think Kronos is really easy to kill unless he's just miles ahead and auto attacking for 500. So Kronos is going to go into A because people play him in the mid and in the ADC role and they make him work. He just needs farm. He's, he's similar to Freya, but I'd rather have a Freya. You know, it's, it's sometimes hard to get that alt off the way you need to, but people make it work. That man on Kronos gets a couple of kills. You're probably losing the game, but not necessarily going to be the best in an ADC role or a mid role. Cupid got buffed, but I think Cupid is still poop. I think the Mez on the ult is actually kind of a weird mechanic because you do this, if you get your ult in the right place and you do this crazy thing where you hit three or four people, you want to start killing them right away. You don't want to fucking Mez them and leave them there. Just the other night, I was playing against a Cupid. I was 1v1ing him and I was playing Baka. I jumped on him. I got some autos off and he ulted. And he ulted and turned around and auto attacked me and broke the mez and I got my last auto on him and he died. Had he mezzed and walked away and then autoed me, I wouldn't be able to catch him and I would have died myself. But most people just think of it as a stun. They think of it as I just hit him with this ability and did this damage. I want to fucking hit, auto attack him and kill him right away. And they don't really take the time behind the mez. There's like, what is it? Kumba with one of the only real mezes that's a long based thing. People learn to play around that after a while. It's going to take some time for Cupid to become anything, if Cupid even does. I don't think so, though. I did like some of the changes. The attack speed change was awesome. But really, the ult change kind of hurt Cupid a lot. Erlang Shen. Good pick. Not the best. If he's played in solo lane, you need to make sure you ward so you don't get ganked or your jungler is sitting in your lane. Think about Erlang Shen. Easiest solo laner for me, in my opinion, to kill. So if there's an Erlang Shen on the other team and he's solo lane, I can kill him over and over and over again. It's super easy. Most gods. I don't know why, it just he is. In the other case, if I have an Erlang Shen on my team in the solo lane, it's the easiest lane to gank. Erlang Shen can, knock, or can, can root somebody where they can't dash. They, he cripples them. He can also knock them up, and then he can taunt them with his ult. So that's three hard CCs, and if you're playing a jungler, there's like a 99% chance you have a CC. So as long as you don't overlap and you guys kind of combine them properly... That person's gonna die unless they're super fucking big or super fucking tanky. Erlang Shen's good. It's just you have to play around it. It works in most situations. You just can't get caught out a lot. Because if you get caught out a lot, you get fucked and you're done. Fafnir is next. I like Fafnir. Fafnir is really good. A lot of people don't seem to like Fafnir after the nerfs. The buff that he gives is broken as fuck. He's super safe. He can jump in, stun somebody, ult, jump out. He can stun somebody again. He can do whatever. He just has a lot more mobility than people realize. You just have to play around the ult properly. And his ult really does separate people because it does a decent amount of damage. And people don't like to stay. As soon as Fafnir ults, they want to get out of the fucking circle that Fafnir's created. So it's a really good kind of separator for either zoning for your team or making them break apart. Like It, it just works really well. Fenrir, A tier. I don't think Fenrir is that good. But as long as you get away with the aggressive early game and you don't fuck up too bad, he works. It's not a hot pick, but he works. Freya is going to be A+. Throw so Freya in the ADC role, farm your ass off, carry the game. Uh, if you get to like 20 minutes with decent farm and not, without feeding your brains out, you're going to have an easy, maybe not easy, you're going to have a very, very high chance of carrying the game. Geb, I don't mind Geb. I don't think he's that good. I think aggressive supports are better. But with that being said... It's Geb with a fucking shield, a knockup, a stun out of the ult, um, the mobility out of the one. He can work. It's just better support. Guan Yu. 
is going to be S minus. And you guys are like, what the fuck? Guan's S minus. Guan right now in the support role does so fucking well. And that's because I talked about the early sustain being, or I talked about sustain being bad, but Guan's early sustain and the way Guan heals isn't like in a fight, I'm going to heal, blah, blah, blah. It's like, let's fight. Let's run away. Get the anti heal off of us, heal once or twice, and then go back in. And it's really hard to fight against that right now in this meta. It's really fucking hard, especially with meditates. If that Guan team has two meditates on top of the heals, that's like heal, meditate, meditate, full health, and you go back in. The other team only has their one med and they only heal a little bit. They're going to get fucked on. Hades. I don't like Hades, but some people will play Hades. It'll get played in the mid or solo at some point. It happens all the time. People like to that tanky kind of initiator to be played in those weird roles um hades is just i don't, I don't like hades <laughs> i don't i don't see what hades brings over a real mage somewhere or a real warrior guardian out of solo lane not safe in most situations but once ahead or if you use that alt right which not many people can do that's why i put it in the a minus where some people can make hades work uh, then you'll see hades kind of thrive but it's it's not gonna be a top pick Evo, A minus, another thing, super not safe, really easy to kill, hard to stay ahead in most situations. Late game, you can one shot somebody, but that's usually one person that you one shot, then you die. Some people play Hedo, Hedo, Hebo, and make him work. Simple as that. He's not the worst, he's just not anywhere near the best, and most people aren't going to play him. Hell, I don't like Hell. Lack of mobility, very based around healing and you can just kind of dive hell the, the real strategy against a hell is build anti-heal and just jump on the hell and settle them and fucking kill them and there's really nothing you can do about it hercules another one of those situational some people are going to play hercules and make him work but he's not going to be a top pick oh ye a tier got nerfed a couple times still works not a top pick pretty safe though can still lane can still clear can still rotate um really you could throw he Ho Yi, he Ho Yi in the A plus, and you wouldn't really be changing all that much. Like you, I won't be surprised if in between here he's just he's played a lot. Not the worst, not the best. I'll leave him in A plus because you can really pick him whenever you want and just play him. Combats. I don't like combats right now, but he's not really like oh this player is gonna play combats and make it work. It's kind of when you play combats you're down to lose the early game and you really just gotta use your alts properly in team fights. You gotta rotate. You gotta be team fighting to do well. It's hard to get ahead early game on uh, Hunbats right now, and that's why he's kind of fallen from a top, top jungle pick to right in the middle where he's okay, but not the best. Isis got buffed recently. The wing gust now do, do like scales 40% more overall, the wing gust. Um, so you have more clear, but Isis is still the same. Um, not a great team fighter. Really good at doing goal theory. Pretty good at early pressure. Just not the best team fighter. That's why you don't see uh, Isis play that much. I don't know what oh, this isn't even a god. This is a god. I don't even know what god this is supposed to be. So we'll talk about. There's two new gods on here that haven't been updated. One's gonna be Izanami, and one's gonna be fucking. I don't know. We'll, we'll have to go figure it out. Janus S tier. Whoops, he's pulled up. Whoopsie, whoopsie. So Janus S tier. Janus is like easily one of the top mages. If you're not Janus, honestly should be a S plus. Um, Janus is gonna get picked or banned like 99 percent of the time. I'm going to put Janice in S because it doesn't really compare to the, the next picks that are coming up. So Janice is really good. Nothing's changed. A lot of damage, a lot of mobility. Easy. Jingwei. Broken as fuck. Infinite rotations, pretty much, just by backing. I'm, from what I understand, early game, you can start with less pots, so you actually have more gold than the other ADC. Uh, because you can back and just fly in, you're really never going to miss any farm. It kind of gives you that opportunity to do back camps by yourself or with somebody else and gain even more farm and still make it to lane. Jingwei is the, like, OMG, what the fuck? This ADC is disgusting. I hate playing against it. I never want to play against it type thing to me. Uh, in ranked, casuals, competitive, wherever. Jingwei is just too fucking good. Kali. Somebody's going to play Kali. I don't like Kali. Bad early game now that Red Pot's gone. Needs a fuck ton more farm than ever before. It's kind of just something, I, I don't know. You Once you lost that Red Pot, he fell off real hard. Kepri is going to be A tier. Great laning phase, bad team fight. Pretty simple. Kalkin. I think Kalkin's going to see a shit ton of play in these lands. The early clear, so you almost automatically clear on Kalkin. You always have the rotation potential because of your two and the fact that you can just drop your tornadoes and run away and it's cleared. 
So that'll lead to early mid harpies. That'll er lead to the fire creeps. There's so much lockdown being played right now. And with the ult, you can just kill tanks early. Kalkin, unless you whiff all your ults, is amazing. You have this huge one burst. You have your ticking three. And then you have an ult that hits for like a thousand. Um, you'll see more and more Kukulkin, I think, over time. Kumba, S minus for me. I like Kumba as a support. I like Kumba way more than Athena. The setup potential is ridiculous. The fact that a Kumba can really run in 1v4 and get out, uh, either between the passive or the abilities, the ability to mez, root, run away, ult somebody up, all that shit. It's just a lot. And it's really undervalued, but at the same time, it does get played a lot. It is a top pick, in my opinion. Loki is poo poo putting loki down in b you just invade a loki over and over and over again and loki loses medusa a minus not the best not the best not the worst adc people will play her but because it's their thing more so or just they have the some amazing team comp that's going to guarantee medusa ult. but usually medusa is not a top pick anywhere near there right now mercury gonna be a tier for me i think the fact that nem is nerfed and people aren't playing aqua on that much people aren't playing hunt bats that much they're really looking for another jungler and mercury works you have the early clear with mercury oddly enough because your auto attacks hit so hard and your one actually helps you clear i think mercury has one of the best level twos for being aggressive in the game in most fighting situations at level two it's just a lot of auto attacking and who can use the creeps to their advantage well with mercury you throw your one at the creeps you kill the creeps as fast as possible and then you grab somebody just as the last creeps are dying you either dash through them or you, right when they die, you grab somebody, you pick them up with your three, and you throw them in your own creeps. And a lot of the gods don't have mobility at level one and two. So Mercury really kind of excels at, hey, I'm going to fucking put you out of position, and we're going to take advantage of it. And most people just underestimate the shit out of it. Nija, going to go into A tier. Early aggression. Once you fall behind, you're fucked. If you stay ahead, you can control a game. You're all one shots. Uh, but missing one alt late game, and you lose the game. It's kind of like a good pick, but you get fucked over really hard. Neath, S minus, super safe, global all OP, able to clear in the lane, great pick, doesn't really have too many disadvantages. There are some matchups where you'll get shit on, but not that many of them. So Nemesis was nerfed. I'm putting Nemesis down at A minus. Nemesis got nerfed on the alt. The cooldown got increased or whatever the fuck it was. I, yeah, that's what it was. And then nerfed again where early game is even worse and it does the alt does less. So they just nerfed them, nerfed them again. I don't like Nemesis. I think she's really bad. I think the fact that she doesn't clear on top of the fact that her ult doesn't do much early game makes her nowhere near a top five pick. Not even fucking close. Nox. Situational. You miss abilities in team fights like at all. Like you miss one combo of abilities, you become worthless in that team fight 99% of the time. If you're landing all your abilities, you're going to fuck on people. There's going to be some mage player in the SPL who loves to play Nox and can get away with it. You can easily get away with it in ranked and casuals. Just not something I recommend at all. Nuwa, I still like Nuwa, even with the minion change. Some people have been complaining about the minion change. I don't agree. I think a good Nuwa player who's taking advantage of the root, using the global ult effectively as a disengage or a finisher, is really something that's hard to stop. It really is fucking hard to stop. Odin. Good pick. And I, I'm putting an A minus, not because like some people are gonna play Odin, they love Odin. It's Odin gets played in the healers and in the team comps that don't have leaps. So it's more of a situational pick here rather than a this person plays it because they can type of thing. Osiris, I'm putting in A tier. I don't know why Osiris doesn't get played more. Um, I really don't. Let me scroll so everything's shown. So yeah, I, I don't know why Osiris doesn't get played more. I don't know enough about solo to tell you guys. I do as a jungler know that it's easy to kill an Osiris in my opinion. Early game, easy to gank. And the Osiris can somehow have trouble, not somehow, sometimes have trouble getting into team fights and doing his job. But a good Osiris player is one of the most annoying players slash god combos in the game, period. Poseidon. I don't like Poseidon. I think it's too easy to build an Aegis or just build beads between the two and get out of every Poseidon ult and make Poseidon worthless. So I don't recommend Poseidon. Ra going to be super situational, slot, not situational, super... This person plays it because their team comp plays with their team plays well with it. Uh, the healing can be annoying. It's kind of similar to Guan where you want to do some damage and then run really far away, heal up, and then come back. Comboing with the ult, if you're building damage, hits for 9, 900, 1,000, whatever. There's a lot of gods, like I said, with knockups and stuff now. So it's easy to combo off of those abilities with raw ult if you communicate. And he'll work. He's just not a top pick. He's got the clear early, which is also helpful for the gods to make it into those stages for some players and make it work. 
Raijin got nerfed. Used to be a top pick, like number one or two. I think with those nerfs, you know, we're going to see less Raijin. I think Raijin's safe with the dash. I think the ult kind of puts Raijin in a bad position most of the times. But if you're using your ult over walls and stuff to stay out of sight, then you'll be okay. But in general, the nerfs to Raijin makes him a lot less scary to me and not a top, top pick. But something that'll work. Actually, A+, plus, I don't think A is fair. I think A+, plus would be more fair. Because he still clears really fucking good. And he still is a very good matchup out of the mid. Like a top 5. So that was kind of a bad... Putting him in A was dumb. He's definitely like a top 5. Just not number 1 anymore. That's for sure. Rama, S-. minus. Rama's ult makes Rama safe. Great clear in lane. The auto attack damage is insane. I feel like auto attack ADCs are really top priority right now over all the other adcs so i'm putting rama in s minus right at tasker i'm putting in s minus one of the best early games right now because you start off with boots you get the rank 2 acorn which is 10 power 10 movement speed and no other god can compete with that since red pot's out of the game so you have the early clear you have a lot of pressure you have the ability to fight early and just push it and take fire creeps take mids do all the stuff and just snowball off of that plus the ult is like a thor alt that can't be missed it's so fucking hard to miss your rat alt so rat is an amazing pick right now in my opinion out of the jungle robin uh, i'm gonna put robin in s minus because you're not gonna see robin get banned in the top two but robin's gonna get picked and played in the top three a fuck ton super safe god does a lot it does way too much damage early he's too tanky with his shield and other bullshit for how much damage he actually puts out with his one and his three it's, it's fucking annoying really fucking annoying Scylla a minus once they nerfed the the purple pot once they took out purple pot Scylla's clear became poop and she just doesn't get played anymore uh somebody will pull her out once mages are banned but she's just not a top pick sir cat for me is s minus i think sir cat's amazing you get the early clear if you're using your one and hitting all the creeps in the camps which should be fucking basic you get mobility because you're getting blink later on as long as you're not going into team fights 1v8, you're going to do a lot of fucking damage. Sirket's great at ganking either duo or solo lane. There's really not too many downsides to Sirket other than if the other team plays a great Awelix. Even then, you can play around at Awelix. Just don't leap in front of the fucking Awelix over and over again. Scotty. I don't like Scotty. I don't. No mobility. Um, not really a pure auto attack base because you kind of have to use your ice and your one to play the god properly. Plus, your dog is really key in Scotty doing well. So somebody might play Scotty. Not gonna be a top pick. Sobek, decent pick. I like Sobek. Aggressive junglers. I get or sorry. So supports are really good. Like I said earlier. So we'll see some Sobek. It's gonna happen. Soul broken as fuck. Lijing Wei not really broken as fuck, but you get lane pressure. You're super safe. She's just annoying. She's a really good god. I don't know what it is because like in my head I'm like I don't mind playing against a soul. Then you play against a good soul and you're like. Fuck that, I'm never playing against Soul again. You're going to see Soul picked and banned just about every match, I think, in these coming lands. Wukong, great pick. Um, Probably putting him in A+, plus though, because he's going to get picked in the 4 and 5 slot after a bunch of solos are banned, and you just need something safe that can clear and not get ganked over and over again. Suzano, S- minus still. His early clear sucks balls, but his ult is broken. The damage out of his 1 is broken. His mobility is broken. He's got set up out of his pull. There's really nothing bad about this god other than the fact that you're early clear like level 1 and 2 is really shit. Sylvanas, A+. Plus. Not because of the healing in this situation. He does great in lane, and then he has a lot of setup. He can like do the guan back up and heal type thing. He just works with the right team comps where you have initiation elsewhere. Thanatos, I think Thanatos is poop. I do think there might be one or two players that make him work. So I should throw him into A- minus to be fair and accurate. I just don't think Thanatos is good. You're going to fall behind on Thanatos unless the other team is just playing like poop. And if you fall behind on Thanatos, you're out of the game pretty much unless your team's carrying you. So there's just better picks. Thor, still S-. minus. I think Thor, once again, is the top two, top three jungler like always. Global ult, broken as fuck. Early game is not the best at level one and two. But once you get boots online, your ability to fight and you get Jotuns is ridiculous. It's kind of disgusting. Tier is going to be A tier. A tier, haha. -ha. Didn't mean to do that, honestly. Fine solo laner. Not the best. Pretty safe in most situations. There's going to be matchups where you're like, I want tier because of X reason or uh, all the jungle or all the solos are banned, so you go to tier. It's going to happen. Ool, nothing wrong with Ool. But like I said, I like auto attack based hunters rather than ability based hunters. Ool doesn't do great late game. More of an early game type of hunter, always was. So he's going to go into A where he'll work, but he's not a top pick. But Mana, gonna see played a lot. 
really good at being aggressive, proxying waves, helping invade, a lot of burst early between the abilities. Does great, clears in lane, that's all you need out of a soul laner. Vulcan, we're seeing played more. I'm going to throw Vulcan in A+. Uh, the passive change, the movement you get from hitting an ability on an enemy hero is actually really good. It's super undervalued, I think. I think the people that play Vulcan well really noticed how much it does and take advantage of it. And then the players that don't know much about Vulcan, like are playing against those Vulcans, are the ones that get shit on because they don't realize like, oh, he gets movement speed. He's actually doing a fuck ton of damage. He doesn't have mobility, but that movement speed helps a lot and allows you to position where you need to position. If you can land your ults on Vulcan, not many people can do that, but if you were able to land your ults on Vulcan, Vulcan's a great pick. Chipolanke, poo poo, no clear, no pressure. While well, I said auto attack gods were great, uh, the fact that Chibalanke takes 20 hours to get online, not recommended. Shing Ten, I'm going to throw an A-. minus. I don't really know where he's going to fit in the meta as a support or a solo or what. Somebody might jungle him. I don't know, but somebody will do it. I don't think he's the worst. I just don't think he's really, really good. I really don't. Ymir is going to be A tier. I wouldn't be surprised if European players bring out Ymir on the support. He's... Once again, aggressive supports are really good. You have to play perfectly around a Ymir. If you get caught out as a Ymir, you're fucked. And you fall behind it as a Ymir, you're out of the game. You're not going to be relevant to your team. Zeus, decent. No mobility. There's a lot of gods that just can, in can fuck Zeus, can just sit there and kill Zeus. And before Zeus can get off a full combo of abilities, he's going to die. And Zhang Kui, I don't like Zhang. I don't think anything's changed. I think Shell still fucks Zhang super hard. Um... You're not going to see much Zhong other than your random person that likes Zhong for whatever reason, and the other team's going to build Shell and beat him. So the other new gods, I can't remember. It's Izanami, and I wish I knew who the fuck, so we'll just pretend this is Izanami. I'm going to throw Izanami in the A tier. Uh, the god is weird, has really high scaling on the ult, a really crazy ult. The mobility is kind of poo because it takes time to go off. But the ability to clear is there. It's just weird. The god's kit doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Some people are playing as an Ami and I see it work and other people play it and I don't see it work. So I'm going to throw him in her and A and just kind of see where things go. Like I said, I can't remember what this other new god is. I don't know why. Like, I literally have no idea. I might, there might be other gods missing from this list, to be honest. So if there are, just ask me in the comments below and I'll try to answer. And uh, hopefully we can upvote that comment and just get it to the top so people see it. Like I said in the beginning of this video, this list is based off of my scrims. And based off of what I see in my head, so it is a bias, period. Your, whatever your thought process is, is different from mine. And 99% of you do not ever see scrims. So you have no, you literally have no competitive knowledge of what's going on right now. So try to take it for what it is and don't be a bunch of fucking assholes. <laughs> if that makes sense. Because people just rage over tier lists. This is wrong. This, you're so stupid. This and that. Dude, first of all, it's my opinion. So, fuck off. Second of all, your opinion is based on something completely different than mine. And if other people are going to look at it when they're basing my opinion versus yours, yours probably has a lot less credit because you don't play against top players. You don't really understand the knowledge that goes into the game at the highest level. There's a lot more than this ability hits hard, so it's good. No, it's not that simple. So just remember that when you're looking and thinking and hearing me talk. I'm trying to explain this the best I can. It doesn't always work out that way. Sometimes I put gods in the wrong place. It just happens because there's fucking 70 gods or whatever the hell it is. Some ridiculous amount. So, with that being said, hopefully you guys like the video. I will see you guys in the YouTube video tomorrow.